Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. We're here. Josh Kelly. Josh, it's been a little bit of a while since we've had a catch-up. I believe your last fight night in Newcastle. How are we? How's things? I'm good, my mind. You? Yeah, no complaints at all. No complaints. You're getting out. Back end of this year, Roark, Nap. Um, yeah. 17 victories. Bit of an unknown quantity, I think, for a lot of people over here in the UK. Done, obviously, his career out there in South Africa. But what do you make of him? What do you make of him as a test and as a fighter? He's a good fighter, man. He's a solid fighter. He's a solid fighter. If anyone wants to have a look at him, he's a good fighter. But um, I'm just better. <laughs> I'm just better. It's clear and simple. That's how it is. In terms of activity, you've been kept, I would say, fairly active. Obviously, this mm. year. Stuff like that. Do you think we're starting to really see the best of you now? You're coming into your own new work, obviously this weight class that you're in now, you look a lot fitter, stronger, healthier, and you can tell in your performances, obviously the Troy one, how sharp you were, the last yeah. one, um, you know, complete whitewash. Do you feel now you're sort of coming into this peak? Yeah, mate, yeah, definitely. I mean, I remember last last uh Last fight night, the guy, the guys, uh, they send like someone in to watch you get wrapped up, man. And occasionally, the guy goes, this is guys from his team is like, how much does he weigh now? And then he was trying to guess how much I weighed, and he was sort of just like well off the ball, well he was thinking, oh, and I was like, nah, 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 I'm, I'm a lot heavier than that. And he was like, what? And then he went back, and it just seemed as though therefore, I'd rather guy come out and just start running for twelve rounds. I was like, what happened there? It was fucking weird, but um. I feel as though everyone comes with a plan to box is the certain way, and then when you get in, it totally changes. Uh, so I've had every style, mate. I'm start, I'm a man now. I've had every style tossed at this throughout the amateurs, throughout the professionals now. So I feel as though I'm confident in dealing with um, the majority of people. And I said before, like earlier today, I said, there's only going to be a few at the very top that will push us to the limits and test this fully because the people who are sparred, People I've been in with the people I know I've been tested against. Um, I, I can I, I know I can look myself in the mirror and see there's only a few at the top on my day who can push us to the very limits. Well, let's talk about one of them tests. Um, Troy Williamson, you've been helping each other out a bit, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, but listen, Troy's a good lad, Troy's a nice lad, and he's always good work. He's good work, especially Spawn. Spawn's obviously. It's different to fight, and you've got little gloves on when you fight, and you can't walk past as much. But bomb people can because they've got air guards and gloves on, and it's been it's been yeah, and good work for. I, I like. I, I mean, to get work like that, solid work is hard because a lot of people don't want to come. A lot of people don't want to show the cells, test the cells against people like myself. I'm on for spawn anyone, anywhere, anytime, fighting anyone, anywhere, anytime. So, yeah. Have you found that hard in the past trying to get sparring? Then you mentioned there, obviously, Troy's uh, Troy's in a big fight. Even Agiaco on that Belfast, yeah. fight, huge, huge fight. Like it's um, a good fight. Yeah. But do you historically have you found it difficult to bring people in? Because by what could you are in the ring? Yeah, but I don't. I mean, people's always that. Like, some people come and then they don't come. And I've had some top sparring, some top sparring like with, um, like Sir Liam Smith and. Andy Lee when he's back in the gym and people like that. That was top spawn, but obviously that's only once in a blue moon, do you know what I mean? But you don't get that spawn regular. Um, I had good spawn in the gym, like Abbas Abu is good, he's a good fighter. Um so I mean I was lucky in a sense, but yeah, to get to get the to get people coming in the gym, it's sometimes hard work. Um talk about these big fights because like I feel like every time I speak to you. Like the last couple of fights, you're always on the cusp of mm. a mega fight, like where we see these names. And I'm sure for you, it's always a case of, come on, like it's not obviously you're the fighter, you do your bit. Is there a little bit of frustration that we're not seeing you in with maybe someone who's like on that maybe the cusp? Do you know what I mean? Or uh, I don't yeah. know, like bigger names. I feel like I feel like you're now ready for that, like them big big fights. You know the ones that people been talking yeah. about. Because I know you get. Yeah. Like, Conor Ben and every man and his dog at times, but are you like are you? Got a, is there a tiny bit of frustration that it's not someone a bit higher up, you know, at that level? Uh, it's a little. It, it gets you a little bit because it's like after that Williamson performance, my name and our and the the way I, the style and everything and what I've got, I bring a, I bring I bring a big I bring a big audience to the table, so I should be getting these big fights. But 
I've been asking for them. Don't worry. I've been asking for them. There's been people being phoned and whatever, but um, I'm trying to get fight some man these days, but it's hard. The politics of boxing is fucking crazy. And the more how many eyes you can get on the sport and different things. And I guess you back at Ben's in the normally where they that's their that's the that's the only fight to make for them until that fight's over, then they're not really looking at anyone else. But there's other guys in the in the not in about who I would love to fought, but I don't seem to be one two fight. What do, you, what do you make of that that's coming up? We hear it's going to be... We hear there's actually a stumbling block that came out last night um, on the money side, I believe it got reported on the internet between Ben and Eubank. What do you make of that fight? At, at anyway, it's a bit of an anomaly. What do you what do you make of it? I mean, it's the, it's the names, isn't it? If they weren't called Ben and Eubank, it wouldn't be such a big fight. It wouldn't be... It probably would never have been happening, but the dads made the fight. Um, the dads uh, the dads initially... It's initially the dads would pave the way for the sons to do what they've done. Um, and you can't, you can't deny it's a good fight, but I believe Chris is operated at a good level, a solid level as a pro, and you kind of take that away from him. I don't think Connor's been in with the level of opponents Chris has been in with or operated on that level. So it's going to be a good fight. It'll be a test, especially at 160. Yeah, the fight now. You've got, you've got Hallam as well bouncing up there now with uh, Chris Eubank Senior wanting calling out Connor as well. <laughs> Mad mate, but as you say, as you said, there's a stumbling block on the money, and that just tells you everything about the sport. Everything's money. So these world titles and people wanting to become the best in the sport and different things is really starting to fade out now. It's starting to become like starting to come on my eyes and get on it. Now much money it makes, and sort of like. Do you move with the times? Do you stay with the old school mentality? Yeah, I've always wanted to become the first world champion from Sun, I believe. I still will be, but it sort of just comes different. So you got you got you gotta start moving with the times a little bit, getting a little bit it's starting to become the era of who have been talking the more shit online, sort of thing. So <laughs> yeah. um well look how far do you are how far in yourself, you know your own ability, how far do you feel you are? fighting a, a Charlo, a Tim Zhu, all these boys. You feel like you're ready now if that fight got made after this to say, look, we're going to bounce you into one of them fights now. It's sink or swim time, world title fight. Are you ready right now as you sit there? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. The guys are spar with, the guys are all great with. And where I'm at now, I where I am mentally, physically. And even on a deeper level, bro, it's weird, but spiritually, I'm finding myself more and more. And where I'm, when I find more about, out about myself that way, it actually... In the ring, I actually start performing better. It's weird. I mean, that's a conversation for another time and another place, and maybe with some other substances, but not for now. You know what I mean? Not for now. Not for now. Well, 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 let's let's not go deep into it, but we can't touch the surface on it because you've mentioned it to me before. Your mindset from years ago is different. Your, it is completely different. I remember you before yeah. having SU stuff, and we won't go over all that again because you've, you've mentioned it hundreds of times. But you seem like almost now when you come into these fights more in a place of like Zen, you're like completely at ease with everything. The occasion you can tell, like you, you, you're so locked in and focused. How much of a difference is, um, like you mentioned there, your mindset and how you are outside the ring, how you prepare? How much has this sort of helped you, you know, develop and is helping you with these fights? Mate, massively. It's like, just like a, a, like a cold shower. Just uh, unbelievable. Just every time I, I feel like I'm in a good, because uh, I think so, there's a fine line between wanting to win and wanting to win too much. Previously, I was wanting to win too much. And when you want to win too much, you never perform. And now I've got that balance perfect now. But at the end of the day, it, life's life. Things are going to go on. 100 years from now, we're not going to be here. And hopefully, we are a member for something, but we're not going to, no one's going to see how can you remember, can you remember on the fucking 16th of November, Matt from Boxing Social and Josh Kelly did an interview. You're not in 100 years. No. <laughs> so it's like, who really gives a fuck? So it's getting in there, doing what you do best, enjoying it, take oh it for what it is. And then um, naturally, if you're a winner, you're always going to want to win. It doesn't matter what I do. So if I'm, I won't even let my kids win against this. Do you know what I mean? So, and they're four, they're, they're like only four and three. So I won't even let them win against this. They got to learn the hard way. So I'm naturally, it's like that, but mindset wise, it's a beautiful place where I'm at.
Well, God willing, in a hundred years, they do remember some of these interviews, and more importantly, they do remember. Yeah. You hopefully becoming obviously the first world champion from the Sundown area. Look, let's sign this off. Have you got a message for all your fans that are coming out in your in your home city to give you support and who are following you on this journey? Because it's been an interesting ride. Yeah, mate. It's the first time being back to Sunderland since 2012. Um, I've heard the noises crazy over there already. I've my phone just been non-stop. So um let's do let's do the city prior and turn out. 100 percent Look, Josh, always a pleasure catching up. Fingers crossed we have somebody there fight week and we do a further catch up with you. Appreciate your time. Cheers, man. Thank you, Bob. Cheers, man.